Alrighty, so hello everyone again. It's John John Brown. I got my good friend Mark with me today, and and uh, we uh, we're trying to do some videos for uh, our Muscogee Creek Nation youth. Um, I work for our Muscogee Creek Nation Cultural and Archives Department. I'm a special projects coordinator there. Uh, I get uh, a dream job, if you will. I get to go out and and. Uh, share some of my teachings, some of the stuff that I've learned, pass it on with our traditions, uh, things that we make, weaponry, a lot of it call it our weaponry, our bows, arrows, blow darts, blow guns, um, atlatls, uh, you name it, we're trying to make it, we're trying to, to get this you know, on film where we can share it with a lot of people. So uh, today we're gonna go over a little bit of, of the, the blow darts, uh, you know, our um, I've been told um, that a lot of the blow darts for the, the native kids when they were growing up back in the day, back when this, all this was going on, they started letting them uh, play with it, if you will, or, or even they, this was, it was a way to start the young people out when they were hunting. Um, it taught you to be quiet, it taught you to be still, it taught you to be patient. Um, you took what you could get, but uh, it was a way for them to start learning and providing for their tribe, for their family, for their community. Um, so they hunted a lot of small game. Um, there is, uh, in some of DeSoto's writings, uh, when he was exploring the Americas, there's a part in there where he came upon a tribe and, and he looked over and there was three or four squirrels laying on the ground. and and every one of them had been shot in the eye um, with a blow, blow dart. And uh, he asked the, the man there, which man done it? And he said, no, the kids did that. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, they, it, they provided. Um, they would have used hardwood for their blow darts, uh, bow dart, hickory, um, any type of uh, uh, hardwood. Um, the tips, uh, they would burn. Um, when you burn them, uh, it, would, it would make the ends very hard. And so they would sharpen them um, and, and uh, burn that end and then use probably sandstone or some type of, of abrasive type material. They used different types of flint, you know, they would take it and, and you know, they would just shave down and get them a, you know, just a couple of sticks. These particular ones are bow dark. Um, you know, I've been kind of working with these while Mark's been getting ready with our camera and stuff. And, and any piece that you have broke off while you're making arrowheads, that, that edge is just razor, razor sharp. Um, they would have used pieces like this to clean their animals, uh, to skin a deer or, or a buffalo or even squirrels and rabbits. Um, but it's very, very sharp. But they would, they would just take a piece, pick a piece up, and and they would just start shaving with it, just pulling it down, and, and pieces will come off of this real easy. And it's just, I mean, it's the real fine, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but I mean, it's just shaving. Every time I come down, it, it's, just, it's just pulling off these little shavings. And they would just work it, you know, back and forth, up and down the, the whole stick, and, and as they would turn it, you know, it's, as I'm turning it slow with this hand and, and working it with this one, but, it, it doesn't get perfectly round, but it, it'll round up for you. Um, they would take sinew. Um, this, this particular sinew uh, I took off of a deer that I killed a couple years ago. Um, this come off of the back straps, um, but they would take and, and you can, a couple of different ways. I, I peel mine off and let it dry, um, but then once it dries, you can even break it down into smaller pieces. Um, it's real fine. Um, you can even get it, and you can tie a couple pieces of this together, um, twist it together um, to make it even longer. Um, but you, you won't break sinew, it is strong. Um, but uh, they would take it and they would chew on it, put it in your mouth and just chew on it. And they were probably chewing on it while they were shaving down their sticks. And, and uh, you know, it, would, it was just a way for them to, to make their darts. and. They used what they had, and, and uh, um, it uh, it um, 
really makes for a strong, strong dart, especially your, your bow dart. But uh, flint, piece of hardwood, some sinew, you know, you get your thistle. Now our thistle in Oklahoma, which I'm hoping to go back to Alabama and Georgia, um, at least if you're getting to watch this, probably be hitting y'all up soon. Um, thistle in Oklahoma blooms somewhere around August. Um, there's, it blooms twice. There's, there's two different types of thistle in Oklahoma. One we call bull thistle. Uh, the other um, blooms later, and, and that's what we look for. The stuff that blooms early on, May, um, the early part of June, um, there's not a lot of fluff, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by fluff here in a minute. I'll refer to it as fluff. Um, there's not a whole lot of fluff in it. It'll, it'll get the big purple flower on it and all that, but there's just nothing on the inside. And so uh, we wait and harvest the ones that bloom in August. Um, there's a narrow window in there. Once it starts to bloom, um, you have roughly two to three weeks when you need to, you need to gather it up. And, and uh, Mark has went with me a couple times. We have other videos where we actually went out and harvested it. Um, showed what the plant looks like and uh, maybe in this video maybe if he can find some of that footage maybe he can throw a few clips in there to show you what it looks like when it's growing and in the plant and all that but uh, but I'll get it and uh, I tie um, I use a zip tie that I tie around it um, traditionally they probably used to split some river cane and put some back and forth in it and tied it together and put it up to let it dry because once you harvest it, you do have to let it dry. Um, this particular batch that I've got, I harvested last, this is February. I harvested it last August and uh, this is plenty dry. So, um, so um, in, in some of my teachings and taking around, especially when I'm, I'm doing a lot of kids, it's easier to use these bamboo screws and the dental floss. And so it's the same technique, whether you're using the, the, the handmade boat arc trimming it down and all that uh, and the sinew it's the it's the very same principle you have to do it the same way so for this purposes of this this video I'm, I'm going to do it um, anyway we'll get started with this uh, this this thistle um, it'll have uh, have this purple flower that's died off and and so you you just got to kind of work it and and it has stickers all over it, so you got to be kind of careful. But as long as you go from the, kind of push them up like that and then grab a hold, you can kind of work this out. Now our fluff is in here. The purple flower, all this purple stuff will have to come out. Um, there's seeds and all kinds of stuff. So, so first of all, we're going to hold it like this, and then we're going to pull this purple brown looking stuff out and it's just waste so we don't need that and so you don't want to grab all of it at once or a whole bunch of it or you'll pull all your fluff out and we don't want that we want that fluff so we're just going to take our time and we're just going to work our way around here just taking little pieces out at a time um, you just work around it um, you don't necessarily have to have it all out um, it's just all in preference of what a what a person's like I, I kind of like uh, mine to be all white at the end and so I try to get all of it out and uh, it to me I just like that look a little bit better so okay so we have pulled all of the brown stuff out now we're left with this white fluff now we have to get this white fluff out of this little cone down here and so sometimes it's pretty tough uh, it, it wants to stay in there but uh, I'll kind of grab it pinch it as much as I can um, we're going to work this back and forth until we pull it out. Now, luckily, this one doesn't have a lot of seeds. A lot of the seeds stayed in the, the little cone shaped. There is a few on here, and we have to get all the seeds out. So we pull it out this way. We're going to turn it upside down. And I use my thumb and my forefinger right here, and I'll take it, and I'll just pinch it like that. So I've got the seeds on this bottom side. I'll rub it, rub them seeds off, and get them all out of there. It'll make a big hump on your stick if you don't get all your seeds out of there. You'll know it if you don't get them out once you go to tie it. I'll kind of loosen up there, loosen my grip, kind of straighten it up. And basically, 
I'm just going to have a little bit sticking at the bottom. I'm going to take my, my dart and you have to keep your string tight. So I, I put it in my mouth to hold it. Um, once I get in there, it's going to be hard to talk, but uh, I'm going to put it in my mouth. I'm going to hold it tight and then I'm going to roll this stick away from my body. I'm going to roll it that way. Um, if you roll that straight, it's just going to roll straight. If you kind of get that at an angle, it'll actually start coming down that stick and that's what we want. So I'm going to try to hold it at an angle, but I'm going to try to catch the very bottom of my thistle on that and I'm going to roll it all down this stick right here. So it's going to look something like this. And remember you got to keep your string tight. I kind of grab it with my teeth, I get it started in there, and then I start rolling. So I try to get that angle where it's, it's wanting to roll down that stick by itself. I don't want to gob it on there. I want to kind of let it feed between my thumb and my finger here. I'm just trying to let it do its own thing. So just rolling it. As you can see, it's coming out by itself. It's rolling out that way. I roll it down. And there's no set dimension on how far. I usually try to get it about like right there. And that's, I like about that much on my darts. And so the rest of it, I'm just going to throw away. <clears throat> get that out of the way. And now I have to secure everything that I have at the bottom. So I'm just going to take and I'm just going to roll. I'm going to cover it where I'm going to cover it at the very bottom. That way when I'm shooting it out of my gun, it doesn't get hung up. But I'll roll down and now I'll start going back up again all the way up to where I started. Now I'm going to come back down again. And then as I go back up this time, I'm only going to go about halfway. Now I still have a pigtail left and now I've got to tie a knot. I've got to secure this. So I'm going to take, and it's actually what they call it, a double hitch, but I use two fingers, I go around it, around my dart, I grab it and pull it through that hole. Let me get, let me go around it, pull it through that hole, and then grab it and pull it through that hole again. Pull all the way through this time, and then I'll cinch it down. And then it's, it's tied, it's secure. So I'll take my knife and I'm gonna cut that string off right there at the bottom. Now, the fluff that I've tied in there, not all of it gets tied. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of what didn't. And the way that you do that is you take it between your hands and you roll it back and forth, but you gotta do it real fast. And so here we go, I'm gonna spin it real fast. See that stuff coming off? That's the stuff that didn't get tied very good. And then what's left, what's tied on there is your dart. So this dart right here is ready to go. Now um, we have, we, we'll burn them off a lot of times at the very top, I'll stick it in there, take a lighter and burn that off and make it flat. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it. Uh, once again, it's just for looks, but, uh, but then you have a dart and, and then, then you're ready to shoot. But uh, it's a, a pretty simple thing um, that I hear a lot of people say that it, it looks real easy, but when you try it, 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 it can be a little tough at first, but after you do four or five of them, you pick it up pretty easy and it's really not that hard. So you have a dart. I have a couple of different guns. Um, I have a couple of different links. This is the one um, I had a friend of mine. His name was Colin Kelly. Now he's a, he's a Choctaw friend of mine, but he did his bead work and, and uh, I was helping him, gave him a few things, taught him some of the stuff that I knew and, and uh, he did this for me and I, I really like the bead work on it. But, uh, so this is, this is my favorite gun. It's about five foot long. Um, I've seen guns clear up to eight, nine feet long, um, but you don't necessarily have to have a long one. 
Um, a lot of the books and a lot of the writings, uh, uh, once again, DeSoto and some of the ones that were exploring the Americas, uh, when they came over, um, a lot of our native people had real long guns, um, but they didn't all make them out of river cane. Now, my guns are all made out of river cane. Um, there's a way to burn them, straighten them, all that. We're, we're actually going to do another video um, on how to straighten river cane, but, and I'll cover all that in that other video, but we do our, our arrows, our atlatls, um, blow guns, all that same way. So we'll cover all that in another video, and, and I'll be sharing with that with y'all pretty soon. Uh, me and Mark will get a little time and get that lined up, and we'll get that one out. But, uh, but you don't necessarily have to have a long one. I think they used the long ones for the hunting, the, the men, did it, it helps with the distance um, and and it some say it helps with the accuracy um, I'm not sure it does for me I'm not saying that it doesn't I'm just saying for me um, it doesn't really seem to matter um, I can shoot a shorter gun seems like just as good or better sometimes than my longer one um, I do know like for myself I um, here's a little tip and a little learning thing that I'm starting to teach my kids that I didn't do. Um, whenever you're making arrowheads, whenever you're doing woodwork, bow making, um, whenever you're doing any kind of things like that, uh, the things that can get in your lungs, the, the silica dust off of flint gets in your lungs, the dust from, from wood that gets in your lungs can, can damage your lungs just as bad as smoking a cigarette. So. You really got to be careful. Um, I think our people waited, used the wind at their back whenever they were making things. The, I think they knew about it, figured it out over time. Um, I recommend that. A mask, you really got to watch that stuff. I did not go by that. I was, I was bad about not wanting to wear a mask. And so I'm 50, 56 years old this year and I'm starting to have lung problems and it's, it's probably strongly related with, with not wearing my mask. Uh, you really gotta watch that stuff and, and, and be, be thoughtful of that. Use your mask, protect your lungs. Um, so, but anyway, the longer guns, it does take a, a person with the, you know, a lot of air and stuff. The shorter guns, not as much. A lot of the kids can shoot a shorter gun and but they work just the same and, and they shoot just as hard. But it's, it's just a matter of, of putting them in your gun and, and, and getting that deep breath and it's that burst of air. It's, you can't just kind of, you gotta build that air up and then poof, it's that hard burst of air that gets it going and it'll take off. And, and uh, we're gonna set up a target here in a little bit. Um, I'm just going to shoot this one out through the air. I, we probably won't get much of it on the film. Maybe you'll see it coming out of the gun. I don't know, but uh, we're fixing to set up here a little bit. We'll get some targets and, and actually do some shooting. So, um, but it's just a it's just a burst air, and it it'll it'll flat come out of them. Doesn't matter if it's a little short or or long gun. So, I hope this is uh, helpful. Um, some of you Muscogee Creek kids out there, Uchis, Cherokees, Choctaws, doesn't matter. Y'all want to see the real stuff? Y'all want to learn how they really did the, the real stuff? Well, give me a holler. If you want to learn just the regular bamboo and the, and the sinew uh, or the, the dental floss, um, like I said, it's the same principle. It doesn't matter what you use, but it's a lot easier with that. So. Once again, Nancy, uh, I appreciate all that you do for me. Um, I appreciate the, l allowing me to mentor some of our kids and share some of this stuff because uh, to me, it's, it's, it's all about that. It's keeping our traditions alive and, and that's, that's what I hope to do with all this. So uh, I thank you all for, for your time and, and watching me do this. And, and like I said, the offer's out there to anybody, anybody that wants to learn how to do this you can contact me through the Muscogee Creek Nation, the Muscogee Creek Nation Cultural and Archives Department, um, Siobhan there, uh, whoever you get a hold of in the office, they'll get to me. We put on tournaments throughout the year. As soon as this COVID stuff clears up and, and we're able to get back out to our bow range, we'll be having tournaments with this. Um, 
come out, enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I, uh, I get beat by kids all the time in this. So uh, as long as I've been doing this and shooting this, it's a, it's a lot of fun. But uh, uh, even, they, even they can win. So y'all come out and be a part of it with us. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, I just I just want to end this uh, this little video by saying everybody please stay safe and uh, uh, if you get the opportunity to uh, enjoy the outdoors uh, me and Mike me and Mark excuse me Mark uh, we had the opportunity to kind of come out in the woods today and 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 get some of this and so it's a good way to stay safe uh, a good way to uh, to exercise get out um, let all the troubles uh, that that we're going through, um, all of uh, all the stuff, the depression, all the things that are happening because of this COVID, get out, take a walk, talk with the Creator. Um, I I I like to talk out loud, um, but you don't have to. This your thoughts, He hears you. So uh, if you're just feeling a little down and out, um, just try it. Get out, walk around, walk around in the woods and. And just uh, let your thoughts go for a little bit, and it'll do you a world of good. Hadam, y'all stay safe.